Yeah. Alright, so we're here to do the science experiment. Actually, do you know if I get like two of those large buckets? For YouTube video? Yeah, it's for YouTube video. Please? Like two two yeah. Classic. yeah, just two empty buckets. Yeah. yeah, it's for a science experiment. Uh, I don't think I can. We'll bring wings to the channel when you're. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I got wings. Literally wings. Um. Well, a lot of you guys have commented before that I should try making an airplane using utilizing the Mangus effect. What do you think, Mr. Lucky? Now, the Mangus effect is some kind of... Hang on. It's some kind of science effect where if you put a backspin on a sphere or a cylinder, it'll gain traction to the air in one way or another and develop some sort of lift and kind of pull itself upward. You can see kind of many of these effects through other YouTube videos and all that. So I think we're going to try it. Bring me some of these buckets, right? While you're gone, I made this. It looks like a regular plane. Pretty much. That's an old motor. Yeah, that is really old. That's like one of those DT750s from Hobby Kid. Well, why did I bring these? All right, the re reason for that is these buckets, which is a convenient hat for this guy right here. <laughs> Buckethead. But I'm gonna spin this thing using this. And I found this carbon rod. It's pretty sweet. Open one of those up. Yeah, check that out. Oh crap, it doesn't fit. It fit earlier. Oh wait, yeah, this fits, it's perfect. So, how are you spinning the bucket? Uh, I'm gonna use a brush motor for that. Black coffee, I'm so dizzy. Black coffee, please get dizzy. Oh, 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 nothing to get home. Black coffee, I'm in trouble. I'm so dizzy. Please get dizzy. Man, 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 I'm not gonna get home. It's a little wobbly. I'm not really sure this is going to work. I think the wing area is a little too small. Wing area. I guess there's only one way to really find out. I really don't want to do this. Okay, some quick predictions. Uh, I don't think it's going to work for one, mainly because I don't think there's enough wing area here. As far as air traction goes, it's also too slick. I've seen things like these with little slits on the surfaces to get them to kind of grab the air. Another thing is, the buckets weigh quite a bit, so there's probably a lot of gyroscopic recession that's gonna happen because of that. So I'll be dealing with some weird flight forces, but let's we'll just get it over with. It flies, what? And it doesn't fly. We can't fix it, take it. Did you get that last flight on tape? Shut up. I think we have to hand launch it because there's a really, really strong crosswind going directly that way. Good. Are you recording? No okay. props for that. 
Shut up. I'm just winging it. Get it? KFC fucking wings. All right, this motor's gone. Ah, this tape is absolute garbage. Why? Charged with battery. <laughs> Shut up. All right, let's get one more go. This is a different prop though, but it still may not be enough power and it's on four cell, but you know, I may have to change that. Uh, I fixed it. <laughs> I basically hey, fixed the motor mount and placed and replaced the motor. So I guess we'll try it again. This new foam is crap though, from the Dollar Tree. It's all, it's really chintzy, like it breaks really easily, but uh, perhaps the buckets are a bad idea. I guess we'll have to try something else. <laughs> Alright, so I add these little airflow traction traction grabbers. I don't know what these are called. And it's not what happened? Uh the plug came out. I can't remember which way the stupid knob is supposed to go. Yeah, nothing. I think the rear fan, the drive, the drive thing is just kind of crap. So I probably will have to upgrade the drive motor. All right, so I'm gonna go do this. I got round two built. See, it's a lot higher now and stuff. And you have two rubber bands instead yeah, of yeah, instead of just one. one. Wait a second. Is this right? You geared that wrong. I shouldn't design things when I'm like half asleep. Yeah, you this is the wrong way. Put a bigger gear here and a smaller gear there. Uh, you just want to try it anyways? Yeah. I don't think this is gonna work. Spin, I don't think this is gonna be able to start. I just want to get this crash over that I can build something else out of these uh, parts. Is it gonna work, old man? Hello. Let's crash it. Yeah, crash it. Crash it. <laughs> it did a power loop, but it's not a mean car. It, it did a power loop. <laughs> yeah, these buckets are a bad idea. I gotta re-engineer this thing completely. Whoa. Look at this. I decided not to give up just yet. <laughs> but I think people are probably tired of the build montage, so basically I built a new airplane. It looks a lot nicer. It's made out of solid foam rather than that crappy Dollar Tree stuff. The Dollar Tree stuff is really bad this year. I don't know, or I don't know what happened to that. But this is now plywood. I got rid of that rubber band chintzy garbage, so... It's for reals this time. So it's gonna fly this time, or it's not gonna fly at all. That sounds so cool. Yeah, I, I found an online gear calculator and drew those up. It's pretty sweet. So I've never did that before, and now I did that. Pretty cool. Oh, the prop fell off. The <laughs> motor fell off. The front fell off. I guess I forgot to check my seat clip. Oh, I lost a bearing. Crap. You lost your bearings? Yeah, I lost my bearings. You're in the middle <laughs> Literally. of the field without your Shut bearings. Shut up, Sam. All right, um, the battery's on the bottom, so hopefully it's more bottom heavy now. And I'm gonna try less buckets spool up speed because I think it has some really weird gyroscopic effects. So let's try that. <laughs> All right, yoink. What's the damage? So the bucket spooling mechanism still works. The plane just needs to be taped back together. That's an easy fix. <clears throat> cool. Uh, I guess we'll try it again. Let me repair it. That prop is done. <laughs> I like that. Well, let me pick that out. <laughs> Impact. Now I have differential thrust. <laughs> So hopefully if it goes away too much, I just pull it the other way. I don't know why it makes that RPM noise, but whatever. Is 
It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it go. Doesn't want to climb though. We're gonna land. <sighs> the top fell off. I'm gonna re-glue this, but I need more valve motors. These aren't cutting it. It just keeps it descending. You're not cutting the chicken? I'm not cutting the chicken. I don't have to go to like a double version of this one big pile from motors I had on the begin to begin with. So uh yeah, check back tomorrow for some future updates. Okay, so I did fly this last night while you're at work. We're at work. Yes. But yeah, check this out. Also, Runcam sent me the Runcam 3. This is pretty uh, like new camera. So I guess we'll try that out on this uh, highly experimental, most likely to crash airplane. Okay. Nice thing it's orange though, so if it crashes, we can find it. All right, you ready? More speed. That's good. And go. I guess it actually does fly now. Unfortunately, it took a little bit more um, crashing than I wanted it to take. That was probably actually like some of the most crashing I've ever done to try to get something to fly. But indeed, it does fly. Now, a few of my theories on why I think of crashing so much, at least for the single engine version, was probably due to a combination of things. Since it's a single engine airplane, there's a, there's a bunch of things coming off of it from the torque induced by the motor, such as P-factor, the airflow around the uh, fuselage, and the slipstream coming off the swirling air of the propellers. Actually. If you guys have learned anything about airplanes, uh, let's see, uh, leave that. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff kind of covered in there. You can kind of see and look it up for more P-Factor stuff. But another thing that I probably thought of was since you got that slipstream from, uh, of airflow coming off the prop, one side is hitting more of the fuselage than the other. And the way the Magnus effect works is it's creating a differential pressure from the top and the bottom of the buckets. Airflow is moving a lot quicker to one side of the bucket versus the other, which is why I kept getting that real hard rolling characteristic at least that's pretty much all i think going to the twin stock configuration i've pretty much negated all that stuff mainly because the uh the air speed and airflow coming off of each side was very equal on both sides so there was no more induced rolling factor by the motors themselves so at that point it's pretty much up to the buckets to do the lifting and the elevator surface to control the angle of attack which is does this does a magnus effect you plan to have an angle of attack i guess it still does the Magnus Force 2 on that last flight was actually pretty impressive how, how, how well it worked. For the most part, I put the center of gravity about right here. If you can kind of see my fingers, that's just like uh, maybe from the center line of this carbon rod. It's about two to three inches in front of that. And I think it was okay for the most part. Uh, for the initial takeoff, it felt nose heavy because the buckets were only spinning at so many RPMs. But as we got up higher in the sky, I told my friend Sam to come over and crank up on the knob. As that thing spun faster and faster, it started pulling it further and further backwards till, till it felt like the plane was incredibly tail heavy and I had no pitch control because I was using maximum stick deflection to kind of push the nose down and keep flying. Eventually just kept doing loops like that and then and then you shut it off and then it fell out of the sky. But we were able to unfortunately turn it back on and I was able to bring it and sort of crash land it. It's also worth noting that we also tried gluing spoons and forks to it to see if we can get a little bit more air traction as far as uh, you know the airflow 
pressure thing going on between one side spinning and one side retreating into the airflow. But it was kind of pointless. It didn't really work that well. So I'll just put in the footage here. See how the flight forces. You ready? So Let's it's scoop the air this way. You okay. guys gonna work? Uh, I think. I mean, this it it should scoop the air, right? All right there we go. All right, let's go fly it again. I don't So yeah, that was pretty pointless. Uh, I may try some more things with this in the future, but who knows? I'll leave it up to you guys in the comments to let me know what you want to do. So also, a uh, big shout out to some of my sponsors. Uh, big thanks to Runcam for sending me that little orange uh, Runcam 3. I was actually really impressed with the image quality in that. Surprisingly, it's a lot better than the Runcam 2, and it rivals for, at least what I think, uh, the um, GoPro Hero 4 Black. The little, or the little cube GoPro, the session, yeah. Also, thanks to my friends at uh, GetUpUV for sending me some uh, Luminary batteries to try on these things. Uh, these contraptions are pretty crappy, but it's nice to have some of the best batteries to fly on them. Because these motors are sucking like 20 amps a piece of full throttle on a 4-cell, and that battery pretty much handled it without a single problem. Banggood also sent me some stuff too. They sent me some servos for this thing, which are basically just these uh, Tower Pro Nanogram servos. Those servos have been around for decades, and... Fortunately, they're still just as good as I remember them because they're really strong and I've yet to break a gear train on them Especially with all the crashing this thing is done Unfortunately in the beginning I use a little e-flight like s60 servos or whatever But those things are pretty much crap compared to the 9 gram servos a uh, big shout out to my friend uh, Clay Payne uh, He's also known as Sinman 95 or something like that on, on YouTube I'll post links to his channel if you want to check out more of the race quad stuff He also volunteered to come out and help film this thing so we got the sick aerial shots because of him so if you want to see more on like the race drones and stuff, be sure to check that out below. Uh, well, I guess that concludes this video. Um, be sure to let me know what you want to see me do next in the comment section. Um, I might try more airplane experiments, but I'm kind of coming up short of what I should do. Definitely let me know what you guys want to see in the comments because I'm, I'm definitely reading all of them. If YouTube would stop being screwed with my account, that would be nice. But uh, yeah, do all the YouTube stuff, like subscribe, like, turn on the notifications, and um, I'll see you guys for the next uh, crappy science experiment.